live streaming. Live streaming for painting liveries. Uh, I don't know where the hell to start. Uh, do you use GIMP, Eric? Maybe not. Hmm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I can I can see the number of people connected on the uh, restream chat, and so far it's zero. <laughs> hey, one second, I'm just gonna change headsets. Hey, buddy. Uh, well, if anyone does f fall across this video at a later date, um, I did my paints using GIMP. I have been playing around recently trying to do 3D with varied success. Uh, at one po some point I will be sitting down and picking Llama's brain about some ideas to paint in 3D, but for mm. now, hello, but mm -hmm. for now I will be sticking with 2D because it's what I know how to do. Uh, to use GIMP you need to have obviously downloaded GIMP and then you also need to, to have downloaded uh, the DDS plugin so that you can export your files in the DDS format, which is what Assetto Corsa uses for its textures or its skins. Um, gonna paint a Mazda tonight because, uh, as we announced today, we're gonna be running the Mazda Cup next. So, navigate through to our Assetto Corsa directory SDK Dev Skin Templates and then find the MX5 cup. We are going to be opening the Skin00 PSD. GIMP is compatible with PSD, so you should just right click Open or Open with GIMP if you haven't set GIMP to be the default for Photoshop files. And we have this, which is our skin template. Nice basic template for the master. I'll bring the tool windows onto the center monitor. Now, we have these layers. I tend to get rid of additional layers, like so, and then create a user paint folder, which is where I actually put all my paint layers. And then always create a working base layer to turn on and off. Ambient occlusion should always be on top and make sure you have it set to multiply. Uh, big delay, how big's the delay, Eric? Because if you can hear me talking, you can listen to what I'm doing and you'll see what's coming through. Should only be. I don't think I've got a delay set. Um, it's only a couple of seconds. I know I had a stream delay on OBS for a while. I could have sworn I turned it off though, so I'll just double check. Output. No, my stream delay is turned off, so you should only, should only be a couple of seconds behind. Um. Anyway. So if it's only a couple of seconds, mate, you can either hear what I'm saying or turn the audio on for that and try and ignore me here. <laughs> um, oh yeah, so basically you identify all your biggest parts of the car. And it's tends I find it easier to paint with an, a theme in mind. Uh, last year when I was painting my liveries with um, just a colour scheme but no finger quotes sponsor as sort, I found it significantly harder to actually um, paint the car because um, I have a pattern but then struggle to actually l put any sponsors on the car whereas when you actually have a sponsor to start with I find it kind of, the delivery kind of puts itself together so uh Today I'm thinking. Oak. <laughs> we'll do an oak livery for Jim. <laughs> we, could do a, we, could, we could do an oak livery oh. for Jim, 
That's an amazing idea. It might be convenient since I still haven't figured out which sponsor I was going to use for my Master Cup car. <laughs> Whether I was going no, to go. Yours, mate. I haven't figured it out yet. I'll do an oak, oak livery for you. So we're going to do an oak livery for Jim. Was it Sweet. Kill Hungry Thirsty Dead? That's it. Do I even have any of the <laughs> materials for an oak livery? Let's find out. I'm pretty sure I should have all the stuff I got for. From Toyota? Yeah. Custom liveries. Uh, 2018 GT86 Jim, here we go I've got the Oak logo I have to find some other bits online so yeah basically the simple starting point is bring a livery in so, sorry bring an Oak logo in I'll show that so, GIMP you can just drag and drop if it's a compatible file so we'll grab our Oak logo drop it in and boom we have a layer relabel that Oak logo if need be, move it to the top just to see what you're doing. Now, you can manipulate your layer, so we'll put start by putting this on the left hand side door. So, we'll rotate it, nope, not 180. 90 degrees counterclockwise. And then decide how big this is going to end up being. So we right click on our layer. Scale layer. Uh, I tend to prefer to work in pixels, though sometimes it is easier to change this in per two percent. Uh, we shall make this. We we'll start with 700 pixels. So it's still going to be too big. Scale layer. Let's make it 500 pixels. Now we get into something we can work with. Now, I tend to try and like to line things up with something on the car. And we can see if we turn our wireframe off with the ambient occlusion on, there is actually a fold in the middle of the car along the door. So we will adjust the rotation of the logo to match that. Just auto crop to squeeze that on. So this should just be. Uh, layer, transform, arbitrary rotation. Now, these windows always pop up on my additional monitor. So, to get, rotate counterclockwise, it's a minus. We'll start with 5 degrees. That's too much. 3 degrees. Not quite enough. 4 is still a bit too much, so we will go 3.5. Okay, we'll say 3.5 is pretty damn good. Now, as you can see without the wireframe on, there is actually a panel gap around the door. And you can see if you look at the, a, the ambient occlusion layer, you have the fold coming down here, and then there's an actual gap, and it's misaligned because of this gap in the door on the paint. So if you were to lay this layer across all the doors, or you know, across the front quarter panel, the door, and then the rear quarter panel, it would be slightly misaligned, and you would have to spend a bit of time correcting the alignment. Uh, if you've got the time and the patience, that's, you know, perfectly fine. I've done that with a lot of paints. But uh, if you cannot be bothered, it's best to try and squeeze things like logos Onto a single layer, onto a single panel. Um, at a glance, I think that's still slightly too big for the logo, so we will knock this down another hundred pixels. Might have gone too far the other way. We'll make this four hundred and fifty. folders I'll create another folder which is decals. No, not with the user paint. We'll put our logo down here. And we go uh, left hand door. Now, do you want this to be another Panthers homage or just a straight oak? Just straight oak. Cool. 
please. Now I know because I asked him that uh, Jim's favourite flavour is chocolate. <laughs> so we'll probably do something chocolatey on the car. But for now, I'm thinking this Mazda is going to you need a black side skirt that follows the fold of that panel. So in GIMP you can see this tool, this is the path tool. I like to use the path tool a lot and I mean a lot. Okay buddy that's all good. Um, if you want Eric, oh g'day Ryan sorry I didn't see your message earlier mate. Uh, I have got the text chat up, I can see the, the text chat from YouTube and Twitch so if you, you can either just you could just, probably just deafen yourself in here and then turn it back on if you want to ask me something, mate. Your Twitch has got a lot less delay. If you want to try that one. It's only about five, ten seconds. I'll try that one. So anyway, on the path tool. All this does is essentially create points. And then you can move and manipulate these points. So we are using, instead of using the wire, we're going to actually use the ambient occlusion as our guide because that tends to be slightly more accurate for the uh, the panel folds in the car as opposed to the wireframe. Now if I get rid of this layer, i get rid of the layer, there we go. Then you see it doesn't quite match, so you can hold control, hold control, oh, I've got it wrong, hold control, and you'll see the icon changes, or you might not see it on Twitch. YouTube, but yes, I am streaming on Twitch, Ryan, uh, aka Pillars. So that once we've dropped our anchor point, we can drag and manipulate. And so what that does is manip manipulate the entire line. And that's how I tend to get my panel lines to follow a bit more accurately. Then you just click back on. Uh, left click back on to grab the point you want to manipulate again and then carry on clicking to drop more points so then we'll drop another point over here and try and line this up a bit better from that point you just kind of fill in the gap and then we go up to select from path or shift V I tend to do it from menu just out of habit now we will create a layer and we shall call this black side skirts. Lots of layers, we're working lots and lots of layers. And we'll just paint bucket dump onto this. And we have our black side skirts. Now if, generally for the sake of black and acetic course I tend to avoid jet black. So I'm actually going to redo this at like a 10% so on, so on the scale of colour, zero is black in the HTML notification, zero, 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 all the way up to white as if, 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 at 100. So we go up to 10, 1A, 1A, 1A. I'm actually going to undo that colour dump, control Z, and redump. And then the effect going to set it is you still see panels and highlights a bit better. Um, the slightly cheaty method I use is I'll paint one side of the car and then either copy my paths across if the car's symmetrical enough or sometimes just flat out cut, copy paste the layers across. Um, but so for now we'll just stick to this one side of the car, turn our logo back on. do is we'll do a series of perhaps flared stripes going up across the uh, or points or something but we will try and follow this panel fold in the car so if we check on the wire it does have a line and it kind of dissipates at this point but we'll carry the curve around also the puff fold kind of peters out down here 
can even see the fold on the ambient occlusion stops. So we might curve that back onto the uh, onto the skirt colour slightly. So again with the path tool, we're going to start at one point wherever we want this to start, probably up here. Now, bear with me. We're going to drop a fold point over here. Zoom out a bit more. Drag this up. And then we're going to drop, with our control control, drop another anchor point. And then actually grab the original point and bring this curve around. You could just drop your point, you know, uh, sort of on the panel join here, and then drag the center up. Sometimes I find it's easier to have a long path line and then drag the point down. And of course, over here, because the panels are slightly misaligned, we will have to adjust the point just a couple of pixels. Grab our line and carry on the curve, and somewhere down here where the curve, where the panel fold kind of stops, we're going to put another manipulation point on, and we're going to drag this curve back down here, and choose at what point we want this to fold into the skirt color. So maybe about there, and just grab it. Now, if you hold Control Shift, you actually delete an anchor point. Now the um, when it comes to anchor points, the yellow lines with the squares on the end are actually manipulators for the lines if you need to adjust the curve, etc. I Ten tend to try and avoid using them because I find myself making a bit of a mess of the curves if I do that. Maybe we should bring our, oh, bring our line back around the panel just to close it up. Hold control and if you click another anchor point it will close the loop. And select from path. Now right. now right now I haven't got a colour selected that I'm gonna use specifically for this car, so we'll just pick something horrible. This sort of red. Right, we'll just call this layer colour one until we actually decide what we're gonna do with it. Drop it on. And see now we have the beginnings of this. Now this is crept up over the skirt, so we either we can go along and delete that, or we can just drop the layer underneath the skirt and we'll hide it away. If you do want to just delete the colour with the layer on top, every path you create is saved in the paths tab at the top here. They're always unnamed by default and they are turned off, but if you turn on the view you can see the path that was created if you click and select it will go red and now when you go select from path that will be the active path and now either with just the delete key or the erase tool if you are a bit worried about deleting something within that selection you don't want to you can actually go in and erase control shift A you can turn that path back off again you might end up with a slight gap between them. So that's I tend to put the layers underneath other layers as opposed to do that. So I'm going to undo it again. I don't need that path. And I'm going to put the skirt above. Now if you get to a point where you're unsure about something, this is how I do it and I'm quite uh, quite happy um, with a set of courses with the way that they uh, have their game set out because it's very easy to get in and preview the car. So first things first in their directory they're going to navigate to where the car is. Cup, skins, you see there's already a bunch of liveries in here from last year's season. But I'm going to pick an official car, copy it, and then we're going to call this uh, GM2020. 
T18. So these files will all eventually get replaced, but right now we're working on the skin 00 file. So anyway, we can get rid of that. Come back. Now if you already have the DDS plugin installed, you simply flatten the image, file, export as, and now you're going to navigate to a set of Corsa, content, cars. So you go down and find the car. Uh, MX5 cup, skins. Gem 2018. And we're going to overwrite the skin 00. Export, replace it. Now, for GIMP with DDS, I do compression BC3 DXT5 and gem generate map maps. Okay. Then Control Z to undo the flatten. Now, so we will also save this while we're at it. Within a set of courses directory, we'll go out and show this. In the main directory, you will see the AC showroom.exe. That will always launch the last car you were looking at. So we can see here that the last car I was looking at was ah, the Audi. So we can quit that. Now, if you have Content Manager, you can launch the set of courses um, showroom via Content Manager. Otherwise, we'll do it the old fashioned way. We'll actually load a set of Corsa. So it's pulling the folder name. So obviously it's still going to have the icon from whichever folder you copied. But because we named the folder, we can see the Gem 2018 livery. There's no preview for it for some reason. Now if you then go up here and say View Car and Showroom, it's going to launch the showroom again. But this time we can see our paint progress. So we can see what we've already painted on the car. Now we'll quit back out. Quit the set of Corsa. Oh, and my headset's going flat. Where's my cable? It's always good timing. showroom shortcut it will load the Mazda because that's the last car we looked at so this is where we can come in and zoom in and check up close whether our panel alignment was good enough on these lines and they all seem to be pretty good so I said this is going to be a relatively simple livery since it's uh, doing it in a short period of time. So on the back for example we're probably just going to carry through this primary colour that we're splitting the car into. So this is sometimes in some of the in some of the te paint templates identifying the parts of the car is the hardest part of the paint. I think that's why I picked the mass the mass is nice and easy. So obviously you have your left hand side of the car 
your right hand side of the car bonnet front bumper boot lid rear bumper and files like this I believe this is uh, like the underneath the um, rear edge of the front bumper so it would be we uh, the windscreen wipers and bits and pieces are attached to obviously up here in the top right we have door handles down here we have the wing mirrors then you'll always see all these other little bits and pieces I believe on the Mazda this section in the top right corner here I think that dictates the colour of the roll cage um, I think I tried to colour it for the last series but it always came out a bit weird so I ended up just leaving it I think a black or a white colour yeah, so it's just always these little pieces of trim that are sometimes hard to do hard to identify but unless there's a piece that sticks out that really matters you're only really wanting your big face panels anyway so anyway we're going to make the rear bumper the same colour for Jim's car just paint over it now I've watched some some guys um, have shown me their paint files in the past especially ones for uh, the iRaces where they upload them to um, uh, to trading paints and they all seem to care a lot about edges you, the edges don't matter you can paint over the edges as much as you want you, you turn off the AI you can see we're all over the place with edges the only lines that matter are the lines within the panel because for example a set of course is not looking at this black space here it's only looking at what's on on the rear lid so you just paint wherever the hell you want it's only if you were to say paint this and go over onto this piece here that it would matter. So for this I think we're probably going to do you can see there's a panel fold kinda goes up the bonnet. So we will bring a line down almost like a racing stripe. And because it's quite light, I'm going to turn ambient occlusion on. So actually, I can see that this line goes all the way out, and for me, that's actually a little bit too far. So we might ignore the panel fold, but we will use that shape, and we will roughly follow the wireframe instead and get a curved line. down here I want this to actually come down to a point before the bonnet ends and now this is where we can adjust the amount of curve by changing this anchor point line select up here the far point grab in the center with the control to add an anchor point so control click and then manipulate that point the car. I don't want the stripe to get skinnier at the top like the wireframe, so I'm going to leave this out wide. We end up with a curve. We're going to go select from path, make sure our color layer is selected, and we're going to paint dump onto that one as well. So now we have line, and that will be repeated on the other side of the bonnet. So in this case, instead of recreating the path, turn this path on, duplicate the path. Now when you manipulate, so you have the move tool and you have the flip tool, so if you select the flip tool, down here you can flip a layer, flip a selection, or flip a path. And we want to flip it horizontally, so you select path, and when you click on the path, it will flip, and it's moved across here. So then we'll go move, use the path again, click on the path to make sure it's active and then just using the arrow key let's move it hey ramjet this part can be tedious but especially when you're working on symmetrical panels that are all aligned rather than the path ending up in the wrong spot I tend to find it easier to take a little bit more time <laughs>
Your mum's not watching this, Ramsey. She's got more taste than that. Um, but yeah, to move the line like so, and just find the single point. So rather than trying to align it vertically as well, we're just aligning it horizontally. So we basically use that as the point, so that will do. Now because it's still the active path, select from path, make sure our color layer is selected, paint done, boom. We now have our two lines on the bottom. Now at this point, we're going to bring another oak logo on. Because we obviously need to have a sponsor on the bonnet. You can move this to the top. Crop the layer. Now remember, you've got path selected for your move, so you need to select layer again. And then scale layer. You're going to make this 500 pixels wide. Still slightly too big. Scale layer. 100 pixels wide. And now we have a primary sponsor. Now, if you are concerned about getting your logos lined up dead center of a panel, in this case, in most of the wireframes, there is a line dead center of the wireframe. So if we zoom in here, we can see between our windows that this is the center line of the panel. Yeah, I know you're on TV, but your mum's not watching it, is she? <laughs> now, if you in GIMP, if you come to the outside of the window and click on either of the uh, ruler bars, click, hold, and drag, you will bring a guide onto the screen. So now you have a guide, and you can continue to clip on, click on and manipulate. So we can see this pixel's dead center, so we can't get to the pixel center of this, but to one side is good enough. When you then manipulate, you can see the little plus sign pop up in the center of the logo. That will snap to the guide when you get to within a couple of pixels. And that's how, now in theory, this logo is going to easily stay dead center of our bonnet. Now, I haven't got much on the way of resources of Oak. So we're also going to come back to our good old friend Google. We're going to search... Oh, how, how did I click on... Oh, I clicked on the logo, didn't I? Okay. Oak. Was it kill hungry... Thirsty dead. Let's see if we can find an image where we can steal this text. And yes, I say steal. To be, let's be honest, we didn't ask permission for this. If I get something high res, we can probably get rid of everything else. Save the image. I'm going to put it into oh, I think I just saved that somewhere else, didn't I? I didn't actually put it into its own folder. That was my mistake. What did I put it in? I can't remember where the hell I saved this now, anyway. MX5 Cup. We're going to new folder. Yeah, most of the time when it comes to things like logos, it just comes down to how bothered you can be to strip something out of text or out of another image. Uh, in this case, I'm going to attempt to pull the um, text out of that image without having too much crap left. And it might be something that I'll tidy up afterwards, but we can do it rough for now. I've already lost where I save stuff. This tends to be a lot easier when you have a memory that works. So we're going to bring this in. Now as we can see on the layer preview at the top left here, there's a black background behind the image. That's because a JPEG doesn't have uh, a, uh, an alpha channel 
to which is essentially to detect the um, uh, the negative space or the, the transparent space. That's what I was looking for. So we're going to right click, add an alpha channel. So now we can have transparency on the layer. Now we want specifically kills hungry, thirsty, dead. So for starters, we're just going to take that out of the image. Copy, paste. Now when you paste, you'll get a floating selection. You then have to create a layer. And now we have a pasted layer. Now out of this, there's a few ways we can go about trying to get rid of the excess. The, obviously the first and probably the most popular and considering the background of this simplest way that I know is fuzzy select. Good old fuzzy select. So to select multiple areas just holding shift. Oop, accidentally went there. Now for something simple like text this will probably, probably do. See we're missing a few of the edges but it's not a straight typeface anyway. Or well, we can undo that. We can bump our threshold up a wee bit. 25, and we'll feather the edges by just one pixel. Might not seem much, but it will soften the edges up a little bit. And go through again. Still not quite getting it. Nope. Getting enough of that. Bump our threshold up. We'll go 35. That will probably do. Now, good one that I use a lot Control I, inverts the selection, and delete. Now, there's a little bit of dark, dirty stuff on the outside of this, but my long term plan is we're going to put this on a dark background so it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to roll and erase around the edge in case it doesn't get rid of an edge pixel because it's done that to me sometimes. so we always have one since we had to edit the image. Scale the layer and we shall make this let's say make this 500 pixels across because it's catch phrase will go over top of our suit but we might also I'm going to undo that size change we're going to make it 550 scale layer this is the thing, you just keep playing with this a lot of the time until you find what works for you, what you like. Transform arbitrary rotation, and we're going to put a 15 degree angle on this across the front of the bonnet. Now we're going to come down here, we're going to say base colour, because we want to see how this looks with the dark colour in place. case we might pick we want a sort of chocolatey brown colour for chocolate. I'm not sure where the best spectrum to get brown is. I may have to colour pick this mm. from something else. It's it spectrum. <laughs> a reference. Now this we just want as a colour reference. So in this case, 
quite like the look of that brown. You see over here with colour picking the brown colour we want. That one, that looks good. I'm going to delete the layer again. Now in our colour picker, to make sure it saves with this, you can put it in the colour history straight away. And on the base colour, I'm going to drop this in. That's ended up being almost red. back. Shut up. <laughs> you shut your mouth. Ah, oh, here we go. A huge change. Oh, that was too dark. Just so you know, mate, your chat pop ups are covering up what you're doing now. No, was it? Cool. People won't be able to see what you're actually doing. Okay, well that was a, I'll redo it, because that was a, uh, a hue change. So, color, hue, oop, wrong one. Color, hue saturation, I'll bring it over here. It's literally just playing around with the hue and saturation, so this is just color up. And we can see, it gets a little bit more, I'm heading, guessing heading towards the yellow instead of the red. And we can drop the lightness to make it a bit darker. We can also drag up the satur oh, drag up the saturation to make it really vibrant. See, that's too vibrant. Go down. And we end up with a sort of chocolatey colour. A bit more convincing than the one that was colour picked out of the um, box that has no context on it anyway. Oh. So we can use it as our base colour. Now this is where, obviously now, our red is very ugly on top of a brown base. So. We will colour pick our red. Now I got colour. Oh sorry. My lap, my computer's a bit buggy when it comes to this. The colour picker from a colour change doesn't work, so I'm just gonna be copying the code. Control C, cancel the change. Now colour map colour exchange. So you can see this is why I colour picked the red and made it our primary colour. And now we can choose what colour we want to change this to. So I'm actually going to set this to a slightly off-white. And then if your edges in the preview... Oh, oh see this is what I've made a mistake. Control pace. So if the edges in your preview are showing too much colour, you can adjust the thresholds to make sure it gets those colours that are close to the one you're trying to change from. And we can go OK. Now we have white. Obviously now it's clashing with our Kills Hungry Thirsty Dead. But that's something we can look at later. If we want to have a look how this is going now, again, I'll save this again in the right place because I forgot where I put it before. Save. Image, flatten image, file, export. Now, because we've already exported to the correct location once, I, you can just go export again. So instead of saying export as, it's going to just export to the last location you exported to. And then we can obviously control Z and undo the Im flattened image. Watch our showroom again. Now we can see a lovely chocolate brown Mazda hmm. with the white tail. Now the same guy, this was this is gonna be a very, very basic car, that's why I'm not trying to piss around too much with the um with patterns and things like that, because that does take time. But a very simple colour layout like this can be done relatively quickly and can show 
show people how it is that I actually paint the cars and what tools I use. So things like the path tool to do the, spi uh, the spikes on the bonnet. So we can back out of that. So now there's multiple ways we could go about the fact that this kills hungry, thirsty, dead clashes. In this case, I'm just going to make it smaller. So we're going to scale the layer. And we're going to make this 500 pixels wide. Not small enough, scale the layer. 450 pixels wide. Now it's small enough. Now you don't necessarily have to align center, you just want to align it so it's not clashing with anything. And there we go. Now, while we're in preview, we can see that the uh, brown from the top edge of the, um, of the back trailing edge of the boot lid seemed a bit out of place next to the uh, white tail of the car, so we're also going to get this as white. Now, because we've got our color layer, we're going to have to paint it rather than erase it, but either way, you're going to get our trusty path tool out. Going to go about it this way again. So, line this point to the edge. Line this point to the edge. Keyboard shortcuts are your friends. Control Z. A lot of Control Z when I'm painting. I'm drag down. Now you can see it doesn't quite align over the side here. But this is where, if we hold Control, we can manipulate and grab these points again they're a wee bit tucked away now when they're out. Grab, let's move the line down across, we do the same here, control to make sure that we make it a move option. Now we're aligned, we click back on this point, get rid of going to color pick to make sure we get the correct white. Now our path has disappeared so I've clicked away from the tool and the path has disappeared but remember all the paths are saved in here so even though it's not visible I still have it as my selected path. So select from the path, color, paint dump. Now you can see it's a bit of a bright edge, I'm not too concerned about that because there is a little spoiler it sits across the top, uh, the back edge of the. Oh, come on. Back edge of the um, boot lid. That'll hide that little bit of uh, misalignment. So I'm not too precious about that one. But now we can turn and go. We also want our wing mirrors to be white so they stand out from the car. We'll just dump a bit of white paint over the wing mirrors. Hungry Thirsty Dead is no longer clashing with the white stripes on the bonnet. And we've changed the tailing edge of the boot lid. And as we said, the spoiler is kind of hiding our sins of the slight misalignment. Now, obviously, we want to make sure the other side of the car gets the same colour treatment as this side did. We already went to the effort of making the paths align nicely, so we will come back to our paint, go back to our paths. First path we want is the skirt. So again, duplicate the path. Select the move tool. Make sure we have paths. Oh, sorry, flip tool. You have to flip it first. Make sure that you select the path. Flip. And it's quite possibly almost all should be lined up but it's obviously gone way to the wrong side so move and we're going to do it the old-fashioned way click and the arrow keys go through a little bit of tedium but again because of this it should be lined up 
correctly on the vertical, so we only have to worry about aligning. I mean, it should be aligned, yeah, aligned correctly vertical, so we're only worrying about aligning it horizontally. Does holding shift make it move faster, like it does in Photoshop? That shift arrow? Like big increments, but yeah. So there you go. Thanks, Jim. I've just yeah. made just made things faster for me when I do my own paints. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Hold shift, and it'll jump in bigger incre bigger increments. That's the thing. It's been. Jeez, I lose track of how many years since I used Photoshop. Now, so because it's a little bit harder to see the edges of our panel with the brown, that's why we kept our working layer. Come back, we turn off the base, we go back to our working base, which is just white. And we have a much better shot of seeing the edge of our panel to align these up. Black. Select from path, make sure our side skirts, and paint dump. There's the sky's side skirt layer. Now, paths. We want to find. There we are. This was our big colour alongside of the car. Duplicate the path again. Flip tool, horizontal, flip it, of course the path is bugged off over here, move tool, click on the path to make sure it's active, hold shift for the fast move, thanks Jim, <laughs> and then once we get here, the finer control. Now on, you have to watch out with AC's um, templates and etc, because sometimes, even if the panels are side by side like this, they're actually slightly asymmetrical to each other, so you may have to tweak and manipulate. Thankfully, the Mazda being one of the more recent ones that they made is actually pretty close when it comes to being aligned. So we align our layer like that. So like that. Go back to our layers. Turn our base back on so we can see. Obviously, we need to color pick the white again. Select from path, color dump. Now, in some ca in cases like, sorry, the oak logo, we can't just flip that nice and easily. So either you can duplicate this layer and try and remember, or either note down or remember what angle you put on. And I remember what the angle is. So. Or you can just bring the logo back in and manipulate it again from scratch if you remember what all the um, parameters were that you set for the logo. But since I don't remember the size parameters already, I'm just going to duplicate and edit this one. So duplicate the layer. This is going to be the right hand door. It's not a copy. First off, I'm going to put it back to neutral. Layer, arbitrary rotation, 3.5. Now, layer, transform, rotate. That's just to give us a starting point so we can correct it. Now, layer, transform, arbitrary rotation. Now, we're going clockwise this time, so it was positive, 3.5 rotate and to make maintain our alignment we're again just going to click and move until we get to what feels to be the right alignment for this logo now so because these are asymmetrical so flavored milk is going to be towards the front of the car whereas up here is towards the back of the car some ways it's a bit of a guess. I mean, I'm using the gap between 
the words in the skirt there's a bit of a guide but if it looks off you can obviously just put it wherever the hell you want to make it look right in theory you can only see one side of a car at a time so it doesn't matter if it's asymmetrical that's what we're going to do so now we have our logos on both sides of the car now if we want we can put our kills hungry thirsty dead on here somewhere as well so we're going to grab the original that we edited I'm going to duplicate that again and hide it now big question comes where are we going to put this on the car we could put it across the front of the wheel arch we could put it at the back of the wheel arch here I'm thinking that might be the best place to put it so we're going the wrong direction, apologies, layout, clockwise, now we're gonna obviously going to need it to be significantly smaller than this, I'm going to make it 200 pixels to start, let's see how we go, it might even be too small, let's go with 300 pixels, You just have to think about fitting into the space because you've got to remember on the other side of the car you're going to be squeezing this amount of text oh, grab the wrong layer, into a smaller space. But we'll see how we go. Okay, sorry, layer, transform. Uh, arbitrary rotation, let's put 20 degrees a bit much, say 17 degrees, looks about right. Grab another version of it. No, actually, now this is probably something I should point out. When you have the move tool set to pick layer or guide, it will pick whichever one you click on, so in cases of layers like this one where there's gaps in it, if I, you don't click on the actual pixels that are coloured in, but the transparency, you will grab the next layer below it, in this case the ambient occlusion, and you move that away instead. Obviously we don't want to do that, so either you can make sure you click on the right spot as the top layer, or change the tool to move the active layer, and now you'll only ever move the layer that you have selected. Um, but just be aware that if you want to move your guides around, you do have to change back to pick a layer or guide. Anyway. Now we're going to go... Wrong one. Counterclockwise this time. Scale the layer. What we chose 300 pixels before, didn't we? Oh, that was for the height, not the width. Obviously make sure you choose the right side of the uh, layer to resize. Minus 17 this time because we want to rotate back the other way. See now this is for the consideration I was talking about. Now we've got too much text to fit in this gap and I don't want it to go outside of this space. So that's fine. What we'll do is now these two layers because they've been sized and aligned correctly the first time, we'll auto crop that down, scale the layer. This time I want that to be 250. Now we fit in this gap with plenty to spare. And I'm going to change this. Auto cropping just gets rid of any extra space. It'll clip all four sides until they hit a pixel and in cases like this because they've been manipulated the same it means that when we scale these layers we are scaling fairly identical sized layers now if you want to match this exactly again this is where your guide comes in handy align your guide I'll select your other layer and it will snap to the guide and then you just pop it in wherever it fits. Now obviously it kills Hungry Thirsty Dead is too light and especially once we stick it underneath the ambient occlusion it's basically disappearing. 
So you've got your option to colour swap again, so we could either colour swap this to say the yellow or the red of the oak, oak text, or we could colour swap it to be black, or if we could just come up here and see how it goes with it when we invert the colours. So colour invert, it's basically black text, because it's just a slightly off white, so we're just going to do that for now. Okay, so we're keeping it simple for this one, colour invert. Now we have Kill Hungry Thirsty Dude on the back of the car. And we're going to stick another Oak logo on the, on the tail of the car. Once I find where I put that again, again, drag that on. Sometimes the bootleg will be flipped around so that you know, the back of the car is at the top of the image and the front of the car is at the bottom, or vice versa. In this case, the bootleg is facing down, so our text is already uh, correctly aligned. Scale there, we're going to make this 400 wide. Still too big for what I have in mind. Let's make it 250 wide. Thirsty with I think I'm gonna duplicate that layer. Drag it up. And that's gonna be the back of our car. Make sure we haven't gone outside a panel with the panel. That looks good. That right there could be a very basic car. Done and dusted. So now it would come down to whether you want to adjust the trim of some of these, like for example we could colour the door handles or colour other pieces of trim, add more stripes to add a bit more texture through the car. You can really go as fine as you want on the detail. Like for example we could put an accent stripe around the air intakes on the front by manipulating this path tool. back up and we'll manipulate again. Obviously we don't want to do it, we want to do it on our white. Select from path. We already have our white selected. Now we have a little colour accent on the front. Same as before. Duplicate the path. Flip the path. Move the path. Now this one, you're not really as concerned about as exact because it wasn't really aligned to anything specific. Select. Make sure our paint layer is still selected. everything down the decals layer, turn off our paths, save, flatten the image up, export it again, undo the flatten, and now we'll go have a quick look at the showroom. See, a little accents on the front, kind of looks like a little moustache on this thing. Got Kills Hungry Thirsty Dead, our oak logo. Up on the back. So if we're doing something very basic, that could do, you can now go through and add additional sponsors. You put sponsors along the bottom edge of the door. You probably create a number plate and stick it here. Go around to the brighter side of the car. Could create a small number plate, stick on the front of the car here. You do sponsors up the side. <coughs> and we can go through and replace these files 
which can be irritating though, because it, these files are either exist within the paint or they're drawn out of the default. Uh, like the, the, the image is pulled out of the default car file, which doesn't specifically have a livery file. So if we go to Aristotle Corsa content cars. Cup car skins gem. So, as you can see, there's a glass banner which has got the green color on it. There's a crew file, the skin file we've created, there's the plastic, which is all your miscellaneous parts. Now there's no rim files, so the default rims on this car are black, which is why they're showing black. So, we can create rim files to change the color of those. We can change the color of our plastics. Um, well let's have a look at files we had in the SDK development skin template. So it's at the top here, the Mazda MX-5 cup. So the rims and the glass banner. So let's do the glass first. So this opens up as a separate file. Bring the tools back across. what we could do here is what was one of, let's pick one of those slogans Maybe I don't have the new logo pack on this computer. <laughs> exactly how much of these uh, images because there's no guides of sorts on these banners sometimes it's hard to tell um, how much space is available so I tend to use whatever's existing in the template as a guide so obviously we have space top and bottom but I will be unsure how much of this we'll gain or lose on the sides until we try it but in this case we can use the center align tool for the layer Center line, click on the layer we want to align. Center horizontal, center vertical, and then we'll create another layer called the base. We'll stick with a black windscreen banner. Paint bucket. Same thing. We flatten the image. Now don't overwrite and don't try and go export as uh, export if you have an option we, just, we have to go export as this time we have to go back to our car file if you get to, in too much of a hurry to export I have done it plenty of times myself where I've actually overwritten a car paint with uh, 
like a RIM file or something like that. Now we're replacing banner. Replace. Same thing as before. DXD5 and MIP maps. Minimize. Have a look at our car again. See, this was talking about. So it turns out we don't have as much space at the side as it appeared, as it's being trimmed off. So we're just going to have to seriously shrink the size of the huh, shrink the size of the um, layer. So Control Z, come back to our logo. Let's just make it 600. We'll go real small. Guaranteed to fit. In theory. Turn our base off, we'll use the existing logo as a guide again. Like so. Flatten it once more. Now this time we can go direct to export too. Control Z to undo it. a bit too small and as we can as I can see now aligning with the bottom of the uh, existing image is probably not the best idea because it seems to just be curving up at the sides so it's just curving up along here so I'm going to control Z again to get the bigger size scale the layer I want 700 wide this time and I'm going to Leave it just above centre. Once more. Now, so this is the part I do like. I love about Assetto Corsa with its paints is that it's very easy to launch the showroom. Um, I know some of the guys when they're painting, they will have things like um, Content Manager or other 3 ds programs open so they can see what they're doing. Uh, my poor little i5 struggles with that, so this is the easy way to do it. Very quick to pop in and have a quick look at what's happening with your car. As we can see now, our logo is relatively centred on our banner. It's good enough for now anyway. We'll move on and we'll try and do some light rims. Can we get rid of that? Yeah. You can either save this, I'm just going to close it out. I don't need the changes for that. Now, back into yeah, so I'll open up our rims file. Now, this is what we have for the default rims. To be honest, I want something white, or at least close to white. So what I might do is just go off of pure white a bit, like we do on the car. Do the same thing, flatten the image. Export as to our car file. Now, I, since there was not an existing RIM file in here, this time we will have to make sure that we actually select our DDS settings properly. So MX5 cup, skins, gem. See, we don't have an existing file, so the, most of the time the templates are named with the what the file has to be called when it's within the delivery file. Um, so for example the paint was skin underscore zero zero dot PSD in the template and that's what the name of the file is, is um, a DDS. Some cars aren't, sometimes they're mislabeled um, especially on the old, like the original content cars, base content cars. Um, most of the new ones they're pretty good about naming the files correctly. Um, but for now we obviously need to come down here and s to our file type, make sure we select DDS and then we can export once again DSD5 generate map maps. Okay, undo. Showroom. So 
obviously that's not the name of the file in this car. As it has not exported correctly. So quick way to try and well quickest way to try and find the name of the file if you don't know it. Sorry, I want to set a course of directory. Content cars. up the KN5, which should be the largest KN5 file, and it should just open in text. Uh, we want to open with Notepad. Now this is a mess, but we're just going to find .dds. So there's our skin file, for example. Normal map for damage, a map for the skin plastic detail, we're just going to go through until we find our rims file in most of these uh, the files that are gomma like gomma that's tires that's right in your experience Lama most of the, the G O M M A gomma files they're the tire files oh I don't know I would just look at an existing skin and see if it's in there mm. here we go so here's our rims file so it's just EXT rims so we've already exported the file once let's cancel this some, if you're just working on default content, um, sometimes I, I know that Audi's almost none of the Audi TTs have a. Um, they all just use the base rims, so that none of them have a rim file. Mm. Um, so back to MX5 Cup skins, gem. So obviously we just need to take the name Cup off of that. Now, if we launch showroom, uh, Alton was just I was saying earlier, this is working if either you don't have a, um, a computer that can handle unpacking KN5s, or you don't have access to a piece of software that can unpack the KN5, or you don't have Content Manager, or a laptop that's or a computer that's capable of handling Content Manager. This is literally painting with GIMP and the required plugin to export as a DDS and nothing else. It's essentially the old fashioned way of doing it. But as we can see now we have our white rims. Which stands out a bit better on the black than the black for this livery. And uh we would consider that a mostly finished livery will go through and add additional logos like for example if this was you could add if this was the panther car you could add uh, you could add like the Sanyo logo because they're sponsored by Sanyo as well or if we're doing for the Aussie Z League we'd probably add a lot more Aussie Z logos add another oak logo down to the base but yeah I mean that's the basics it's a very very basic car we're talking just a two-tone with a stripe and some logos. Extremely, extremely basic car. But this is more just a for guys that are struggling in GIMP to paint cars. Half the time all you need is a basic car with some logos on it, and you look like you've got yourself a racing car. Um, the it just takes time. It's time and practice. I mean, how the, some of the first cars I did were goddamn ugly, and they took me ages. Uh, 
yeah, it's just practice. <laughs> Don't know if I can say anything else. Uh, did you have anything that you were stuck on, Eric, that you wanted me to to explain again or go over if I skip past it too fast? Yeah, I mean, the big one for me that, that I think it's the part where some of the guys struggle was to get things like the nice smooth lines, it's it's using things like the path tool. Um, the path tool makes life a lot easier when you're painting 2D. Um, yeah, I haven't used the path tool before, so it was uh, educational. Yeah, it's, um, it takes a bit of mucking around with, but it's, it's worth mucking around with. Um, yeah, I mean, the hard part generally tends to be coming up with an idea. Um, most of the early, the first cars I did were very, very much like this. It's find a, a flow on the car, like a panel line or a panel gap, and, and do something that matches that. And it's once you get used to it that you start wanting to try other bits and pieces, like, you know, um, things like last year's Audi that I did, that none, almost none of the... Um, the major part, a portion of that paint matched the lines of the car. It was just a pattern laid over top. Um, actually, one more thing we do need to do. So, because I just thought about that. Obviously, these all these files uh, would require replacing. Um, your UI skin is just the name of your livery, so we would call this like "Feels Hungry Thirsty Dead." driver is going to be in Mike Australia so that's some racing and 48 for Mr. Monarch so that will be information that shows up in the livery selection uh, the preview JPEG this is the preview image of the car so obviously we still have the the default one that come, comes with the car, uh, with the livery from the file that we changed. Um, you can basically just go into your showroom, the most basic, basic way is to go into your showroom or on track, line the car up for an image. Press F8 and then we'll open the preview GIMP and we will pull in the screenshot we just took. Ah yes I will Matt uh, Altman, I will show you how to do that. Um, so uh, I didn't want content, sorry, screens. This is the image we just took. Scale the layer. If we export this file, oh sorry, we just overwrite because we opened up the original preview. So file, overwrite preview. Now we have a preview for our car. The way that I do it these days is with Content Manager, which makes very, very lovely, pre lovely previews. Um, okay, so to do a skin, to make the paint of your car glossy or matte. So this is literally how shiny your paint job is. Um, basically, you need to create a is it map? No, normal map is, is bumps, isn't it? This is just a map. Um, depending on, if you just want a basic gloss, I tend to just use the ambient occlusion, or even more basic, just a block colour. So we'll just... I've got to think, remember to bring these tools back onto the centre monitor. That was just turning layers off. So if you use just the ambient occlusion, you would this is a decent gradient for a shade of the car, but 
let's just go in the most simple way of a block color. So let's just call this the map. Um, now if you were to paint your car, I'm trying to remember, white is... I can't remember which way around it is. White is shiny, isn't it? Lana? Light, yeah. is, light is shiny and dark is matte. Kind of. It's actually each channel, the RGB of the maps, that controls different things. Oh, in the most basic way, I just do it on the grayscale. But oh. That's me not knowing how to okay. do it. With I know, Every time I open up a, a map that's made by AC, it's all in like very fluoro highlighter colours. Yeah, but if you look at each channel, you can sort of see what's going on with each one. Not sure how you do that in GIMP. Yeah. Like the specular is controlled by your red channel, and then your sharpness of your reflections is controlled by your green, I think, and blue does something else. But um, it depends on the, the car as well, which material is set up differently. Right. Well, in the most basic fashion, I just use grayscale. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I still learn stuff, and you know, it takes me talking to Lama to learn this shit. <laughs> in the most basic fashion, though, if we file, sorry, I need to flatten. Ah, it's only a single layer. If you don't flatten to a DDS, it'll just export the layer that you've got selected. So in this case, we we've, we've got our map layer selected. Export this as. It's usually skin zero zero. I think for this one we saw this map. And we'll export again DXT5 and map maps. Now if we open a showroom we should have a very very glossy looking car. You see Hopefully my stream's good enough, you can see how much more shiny and reflective the surface is. And if we escape... So obviously white is... oh, I don't need that one anymore, I can go away. White is gloss. If we were to paint this black and export it as a map, and then load up our showroom again, You can see black is very matte. So that's obviously how you get your matte black. Um, so as Lama was saying, obviously different channels do different things on the car. I don't know which channels do what, especially if it's different for every car. I tend just to work in shades of grayscale. Um, so obviously I don't want something that's that matte, and I didn't want something that was as shiny. Now if you want to do obviously something more complicated than that if you want to have your paint involved what you could do is and what is what I've done, so let's say ignore the decals, we just want our straight paint layers now we say we want our black side skirts to be matte, we want them to be matte black we'll drag this up to somewhere we can use it we'll create a group called map leave the side skirts so we will leave them quite a dark colour we want them to be very matte we'll also bring our base up and we'll bring up a copy of our colour so with this we have our three basic colour layers on the car so in this case, let's say we do want the white, the where the white is to be the shiniest part of the car. We can leave that what is what it is. It's about ten percent white. Now our base, we want to be a little bit less glossy. So we will let's say make that a seventy-five, a seventy on the scale. We'll put a bit of difference in there. And we will replace the base. Now black, it's a bit too dark even for a matte, because otherwise it just looks flat in-game. 
so we will take as we're trying to find the no I went the wrong way on it that's a find the skirt there we go and we'll actually make this about 30 percent Now this, in its essence, is a very, very basic map file. Um, so I'm working just in grayscale, which obviously adjusts multiple uh, variables, but I've not really had any troubles with it um, before, it, because if it's adjusting reflection and shine and all the rest of it, it yeah, I would have to I would have to play with it myself and come back to it later. But for now, this is a very basic map file. Flatten export to the map again. Now if we go in and look hopefully we'll see a little bit of variation. So hopefully if we come over to this side of the car we can have a better idea of it. as we're looking into the side of the car here. I don't think I can zoom in anymore, unfortunately. Uh, we've still got our shiny paint job, and then you can't really see much in the way of reflection off the side skirt, which we made a matte colour. And there shouldn't be much difference between the white and the grey, but it's all reflective and you should see a slight difference. The way to, I suppose, give an example of the slight difference is if we turn our user paint back on this I'm going to turn the color layer off we're just going to be plain brown if I now flatten this we're going to export this as the skin obviously undo that because I want that back on here and you can see it's very slight but you can see the line running down here is the difference in the matte and gloss to the car so it's not a major it's not a big difference that we put on it not a difference that you'd necessarily see with the color but it is a subtle difference and you should also be able to see a slight line on the actual panel fold which is where we've made the bottom of the car a lot less reflective and you can kind of see it there we're a lot brighter reflection than we have down on the side sill so every car has a has a map you can create a map for every car here we go we can see the bonnet stripes because we've made them slightly shinier even the little ones down. they're very very subtle hopefully they come up on the stream so you can see that Um, yeah, that's e every car has a map file, so you can create a map file uh, again to find out how to do it the most basic way without having to unpack the KN5 is to open the KN5 and go searching for the DDS and whatever the, the name of your skin file. Like, so, for example, this one was skin underscore zero zero, it'll be something similar with the word map. So, it might be skin underscore map, or it might be skin underscore zero zero underscore map. Either way, you should be able to find it via that or you can use content manager or um, something else to unpack the KN5 and get all the actual individual default files out but um yeah that this was just the most basic basic tutorial um I wouldn't know if I've missed anything does anyone actually need me to go over or want me to go over anything else that I might have gone through too fast or might have missed Anyone who happens to be watching, I can see the text chats. Right, well, um, I see, guys, it was just, it's real basic. I mean, that's what, nearly two hours 
but we got a basic paint and we know a few bits and I obviously tripped over myself and found out a bunch of stuff even I didn't know. So, uh, <laughs> being able to move stuff quickly by holding down shift and turns out that there is a reason for all the fluoro colours in the in map file, it wasn't just to make them look pretty. They do actually alter various um, variables, yeah, actually different variables as opposed to just a gloss as a single variable. There's a few variables for gloss so I'll be going and playing with that. Uh, myself later on, but yeah, the very very basic. Um, to anyone watching, not sitting in in the OzNZ Discord channel, um, guys, if you're interested in any of our racing seasons, the Mazda Cup starts uh, in about six weeks. We just announced it today, so it's we're going into we've got a break week this week, so no racing tomorrow night, and then we've got. Uh, four weeks of GT3, then one week of the VLN, and then we kick into the first round of the Master Cup. So I suppose technically that's seven weeks away, isn't it? No, it's still six. Something like that. Anyway. Yeah, but um, if you want to find out more about racing at OzNZ, um, the, there's guys that are currently off doing, I think they're racing right now actually, doing, well, they might have been racing earlier, they're doing uh, iRacing VLN and other endurance series. Uh, we race in a set of Corsa. Uh, Llama is busy playing with R Factor 2 and finding out all the brilliant features in R Factor 2 that he keeps telling us about. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, no doubt at some point we'll probably start having a crack at some R Factor 2. Um, uh, we have another member who's trying to drum up some interest in Forza 7. Forza 7. And um, so we're on here to have fun. Um, you know, I find it fun to paint cars. And quite enjoyed painting cars for other guys and I thought some of the guys have tried and have been struggling and this was a good way to try and help them out but if you're interested in anything to do with OzNZ to get back on track www.oznzgaming.com uh, that's O-Z-N-Z gaming.com and uh, all the information about our upcoming series as they've been announced uh, our forums are on there links to our discord if you want to come in and have a chat um, yeah come on in and uh cheers for watching and i really hope that was useful yeah. bye <laughs>